I want to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Wainaina, born again by the grace of God. And I thank God for this opportunity that the Lord has given us to share His Word. Today, I would like to share a message of hope entitled, What to Do when God seems silent. Friends, I believe you agree with me that there are times when we pray and we feel like God is silent. We feel our prayers do not go beyond the ceiling. We pray and before the prayers go to heaven or they reach God they bounce back and that is a time that we can say that God is silent the Bible talks of Job a man who was blameless and upright he feared God and shunned evil and all of us we know the kind of suffering that Job went through and it reached a time when he realized that God was silent and when we read in the book of Job 23, verse 8 to 10, we see Job experiencing a moment of God's silence in his pain and suffering. And this is what he said, I go east, but he is not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north for he is hidden I look to the south but he is concealed but he knows where I am going and when he tests me I will come out as pure as gold that is Job who was trying to fight God when he was having serious problems we know that he had a lot of pain in his body. He lost nearly everything. But at this time, he needed God most. Yet, he is telling us that he cannot find God anywhere. And this is the message of hope that I want to bring to you. That when God seems silent, there is something that we can do. And I can tell you, we are going to find an answer in that. And I want to share, before we look at what we are supposed to do, three hard facts about when God seems to be silent. Point number one, I believe in all my heart that God answers prayers. Players prayed the light way. And what I mean with this is this. When we pray according to God's word, according to the will of God, God will answer our prayers. That is point number one. Point number two, God works behind the scene. Even when God seems to be silent, it is good for us to understand that sometimes God will be working behind the scene. And he will be working behind the scene to prepare us for his purpose. I'm encouraged when I read the book of Esther. Esther, in the Bible, that book has 10 chapters. Yet, there is nowhere the name of God has been mentioned. 
But surprisingly enough, we find Esther, God preparing her to elevate her from being an orphan girl and God elevated her to become a queen. And that is a fact that I'm talking about. That even when God is silent, God is working behind the scene. Point number three. Matthew 1, 23. The Bible says, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God together with us. Friends, I want to bring to your attention that it doesn't matter whether God is silent or not. But the fact is that he is God with us. And he is active. He is active in our lives. He is doing something. So I want to encourage you by telling you this, that silence does not mean he has abandoned us. I want to repeat that, that silence does not mean that God has abandoned us. You might be listening to me this hour and could be I'm speaking to you. You have been suffering. You are sick in your body. You have pain in your body. And you have prayed. Yet, it is like God has a silent. He is not answering your prayers. Could be you are listening to me. And you have been led out jobless. And a time like this, I know that you have prayed. And there is no job that is coming in your way. I want to, to encourage you that God has not abandoned you. Could be you have prayed for God's provision. Yet you have prayed and nothing is coming on your way. I want to assure you that God has not abandoned you. He is very active in your life. As a nation, I know we have prayed for the coronavirus to stop spreading or even to disappear. But instead of disappearing, every day we are seeing the number increasing. Let me tell you that God is still working and definitely he is going to do something. And now, allow me to take you through five things that we need to do when God seems silent. Point number one, hold on to the promises of God. I want to repeat that. Hold on to the promises of God. The Bible says the promises of God are true and amen. And if you read the book of Numbers 23 verse 19, the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. What he promised, he will fulfill. So let us all be encouraged that even if you have prayed and prayer has not been answered, I want to encourage you by telling you, hold on to the promises of God because he is faithful to fulfill them. Number two, when God seems to be silent, it is time to trust him more. It is not time to give up. And I want to bring to your attention that God may be silent and he is doing bigger 
things that you can imagine. And I am encouraged by the words that are in the book of Isaiah 43 verse 19, which says, See, I am doing a new thing. And even right now, God is doing a new thing. And I want to assure you that it is not only a new thing that he is doing, but he is doing a bigger thing than you can be able to imagine. So, friends, be encouraged and trust God the more. Point number three. When God seems to be silent, when no answer is coming as far as your prayer is concerned, I want to encourage you by telling you, do not quit, do not give up. God has not moved. God has not moved. The Bible has reminded us that he is Emmanuel. That means God with us. So God has not moved. Even if it is you who has moved. And I thank God because the Bible says in the book of James 4, 8. Draw closer to God and he's going to draw closer to you. And I can see a scenario here whereby if you draw closer to God, and God draw closer to you, then you are going to meet. Once you meet, God is going to break the silence. And I can assure you, when God breaks the silence, you are going to receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Point number four, be spiritually alert. Be spiritually alert. Reason and watch closely. When we have this situation, which I'm referring to, a spiritual dry spell, it is time that we are supposed to make sure that our spiritual eyes are very alert, our spiritual ears are spiritually alert, so that we don't miss God's plan upon our lives. Because the Bible says that he has a good plan for each one of us. And therefore, if we find ourselves not spiritually alert, we are likely to miss God's plan for our lives. And I want to let you know that God can use you personally he can come through his word. He can come through circumstances. And he can even come through another person. So you don't know where or which method or which way God is going to use. And that is why I'm saying that at this particular time, when you are experiencing a spiritual dry spell, it is time for you to make sure that you are alert spiritually in Jesus name lastly when God seems to be silent it is time for us to examine our lives we need to examine our lives and friends I'm not trying to say that God has remained silent because of sin if anything I have told you that Job was a man who was blameless and upright. He feared God and he shunned evil. But still, we find him uh, looking for God in all directions, yet he could not find him. But I want to say that it is a possibility that the unconfessed sin can make God not to listen to us. Isaiah 59 says that sin 
can make God to hide his face from us and not to listen to us. And Psalm 66 verse 18 the Bible says if I had not confessed the sin in my heart my Lord will not have listened. So I'm here to tell you that sin can make God to be silent. And that is why I have said that we need to examine our lives. If there is any unconfessed sin, let us be sincere with our God and confess that sin. And the Bible says that God is so faithful. He will forgive us our sins once we confess. And I want to let you know that sometimes we overlook the sin of unforgiving. And the sin of unforgiving can make God not to listen to us. So I want to urge you, as I urge myself, to examine ourselves so that in case there is any unconfessed sin, whether is that sin of unforgiving, let us confess before the Lord. Let us repent before the Lord. And when we do so, I want to assure you, and taking all those points that I have given you, that God is going to break the silence. And when he breaks that silence, I am very sure that you are going to rejoice. Because even Job, at one point, he confessed and said, My Redeemer liveth. And even us, we can still confess, even as a nation, we can confess that our Redeemer liveth. May God bless you, may God do you well, as you continue waiting upon the Lord. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name.